This is the issue on the planet right now. Our life support system is in jeopardy and this could mean the demise of our species this century. Every revolution in the past has been led by the people most directly influenced by the atrocity. And right now it's kids that have to fight for their future. It's a big battle we're undertaking, but I think exactly the one that's necessary. I was inspired to make Revolution because of the journey making shark water. We were at the premiere of shark water in Hong Kong, and this was supposed to be the pinnacle of my life. You know, we're about to get this movie that I spent so long on, seen by 120 million people. EcoVision welcomes you all here tonight for the Asian premiere of the internationally acclaimed film Shark Water. A woman in the audience puts up her hand and says, why stop us from eating shark fin soup if all the fish are going to be gone by 2048 anyways? citing studies from Dalhousie University in Halifax and pointing out that if fishing trends continue, we'll have wiped out the entire oceans. You know, pretty good question. Um, difficult to answer that. I, I, Our I film didn't address the size of the problem. There was this much bigger issue afoot, an issue of human consumption. In all of our studies of world fisheries, we've seen this continuous trend of collapse of fish stocks. No matter how you slice or dice the data, uh, with every year there's a higher proportion of fish stocks collapse. Sharks, tuna, billfish, whales, seals, sea turtles even. Everything large that you can find in the ocean has been depleted on average by almost 90%. It was a bit of a turning point for me because one, it was pointed out the last few years of my life meant nothing and you know I needed to figure out what to do. After Hong Kong I went to Australia I met up with David Hannon, who's an old friend of mine, the guy who taught me how to film underwater. You've been involved in this incredibly amazing shark campaign, and you know, it just doesn't mean anything unless you get on top of this other issue. Uh, we are going to lose everything in our oceans, uh, not just sharks. It's a thing called ocean acidification. So in 100 years, that ocean out there has got 30% more acidic. That's having a huge implication for all marine life the oceans have the potential to go belly up in the next 20 years completely you know, in a way that hasn't happened for millions of years. This increasing ocean acidity could cause an extinction just like the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs and we'd be a part of that extinction. And that's an environmental issue most people don't know about. It was really quite simple for me. There was one movie I could make after Sharkwater, one message, one thing I should do and that was the revolution. We don't believe that inaction is an option. It is simply not an option. I mean, if we as a society actually care anything about future generations, we have no choice but to act now. We were putting out queries to the entire world saying, you know, what's your conservation initiative? Are you doing something cool to protect the environment or species? And some of the best responses we got were from kids and youth. Adults, you know, are already entrenched in the system in a way but kids, they don't rationalize their way around any of these problems. They say, okay, we've got to protect our life support system, let's do it. I got invited to be on the Canadian Youth Delegation to the UN Climate Conference in Cancun, Mexico, and said yes immediately. There's no massive conferences on acidification yet. So the stage for our fight for the future is COP16, the biggest environmental conference in the world. This is the Canadian Youth Delegation Hostel in downtown Cancun. I'm not allowed in yet. The Canadian Youth Delegation wants Canada to be a full partner in the process. And at the moment, the Canadian government does not want to participate doing anything that they can to weasel out of a serious commitment. We're going to do our best to show through actions and through media that Canadians do care. So we'll do that in whatever way we can, uh, be it through media, both blogging and social media. The internet is our 21st century most powerful tool of all, and the young people know how to use it best. We're not just connecting and mobilizing in all new ways, we're also getting out on the streets and mobilizing in real world situations. We're getting in the conference. 
<laughs> power of positive thinking. Yeah. I went on this crazy two-week adventure of politicians meeting behind closed doors and we brought undercover cameras into our meetings with politicians because they wouldn't let us film them. We managed to philanger our way past security due to a red wristband and we're in for the first time. We show through an action how our government so often yield to corporate bullying. Last minute sale for the Great Bayer Race. We will not stand for our futures being sold. To be young and aware today is to know that a bright green future is possible. You have been negotiating all my life. You cannot tell me you need more time. And with all due respect, dear authorities, you have no authority to ruin the present of some today and the future of us all tomorrow. Thank you. You're talking about our future, yeah? And then you send us out. That's bully crap. It showed us that there is this massive movement and that while the conservation groups sort of have to work within this UN system to get some change, that they're doing it and they're fighting these battles. I'm Felix. I'm 13. And we came here to COP16 to plant trees with the ministers and heads of states, 194 trees, one tree for every country that is at the conference. The project started four years ago in my class in Bavaria. I was supposed to give a presentation about the climate crisis, and during the weekend I prepared this presentation like every other. And I found out about Vangari Matai, who planted 30 million trees in 30 years in Africa. And at this presentation on Monday, I spontaneously said, let's plant one million trees in each country of the world. In Germany, we've already planted a million trees. There are about 100,000 children in 91 countries involved. I don't think the adults have powers that we don't have. So kids have as much power to change the world as anybody? Yeah, the only difference between the adults and us children is that adults can vote. But the rest we can do as they can do. A few more of those kids ripping around the world and we're good to go. We have brought 12,000 young people from every state in the country, every Canadian province, and another dozen countries around the world to DC to fight for their clean and just energy future. What we're witnessing today is actually far bigger than any social movement before. It is the, the largest humanitarian effort to try to solve the biggest crisis of our time that we've ever seen in history the laws that we have in place right now, these are temporary. These things can be changed. We are humans and we are evolving and we're getting better all the time. And we can come up with better policy that shows our respect and our love for each other as a species and our desire to survive. With Revolution, it was really important for us to educate everybody because there's no conservation group, there's no government, there's no organization right now that's guiding us to a world that works. We're gonna to have to be educated so we know engaging in this activity is destructive and engaging in this activity supports human life on Earth, so we'll go for that. And once everybody's educated, we can usher in the kind of world that we want. We finished the movie just days before it came out at the Toronto Film Festival. Toronto's my hometown. I've got a lot of friends here, and family here. At that point, that was the first public screening of Revolution, and we had no idea whether it was going to work and whether people would actually like the movie as a journey, because Revolution has so much information in it. It's 3.5 billion years of evolution. We'd recently got shark fin banned in Toronto because of the fin free movement, and so there was a lot of support for us and for our conservation initiatives. But it was still nerve-wracking. Thank you, Toronto Film Festival, for having me. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I'm super honored you're all here. 
for the movie premiered and it was amazing. We had two sold out screenings. To get a standing ovation and to get some audience choice accolades was huge for us and made us think, okay, we've got something here that, that, that will work, not just as a message, but as a movie. How do you bring that message of hope and keep it alive while not allowing people to feel complacent? Just presenting it as an opportunity. Like right now we live in a time and a world that's sort of devoid of meaning. We're playing on our cell phones, we don't have much of a connection with people, and we have an opportunity and a necessity to bring people together we have the opportunity in the face of the biggest crisis of our time for all these young people to become the hero they always wanted to be. The ocean produces a lot of food and air and resources that if we lose all of that, we won't have enough to live and most of us would die. Conserve everything and protect all the animals and species so they could have better chances to stay alive. We depend on life for our own survival and I hope that that love helps people go to bat to fight for the ecosystems that we depend on.